Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. An absolute pleasure to be able to speak to you about this incredible documentary. Have you watched it? Yes, I've watched it. Uh, it's quite, oh. <laughs> it's so gripping. It's almost, you know, when a documentary can seem more like fiction than a thriller or, you know, a fictional story. It's, you know, one thing after the other. And also perhaps Russia, uh, like I've never seen it. Uh, perhaps I'm quite politically ignorant, but, you know, to get behind the headlines, and see some of the real people and see some of the real struggles that was incredibly eye-opening for me. Um, so maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction though for people who don't know anything about this documentary. Can you give them a bit of a taste of what they can expect? Um, you're absolutely right when you said that it's a um, story of real people. You, we don't know what's going on behind the news. Yes, we hear news but we don't know what's going on on the backstage of news production. And uh, I try to open this word for global world. What is going on behind the news on the only independent news TV channel in Russia? And obviously what's interesting is your personal role in the TV station and working with Natasha. And, you know, you kind of sort of, uh, were more involved and less involved at different periods of time. So I wondered, um, where, at what point did you decide to make this documentary? And why did you think it was so important to tell this story now? Um, I remember very well that moment when I decided, when I told myself, listen, you must make this film. It was May 2019. I met Natasha and uh, she looked awful. She was uh, kind of in depression, which is very unusual for her. And, um, you know, her eyes were kind of pale and she said, I don't want to go to work anymore. She was and is as a backbone of this company, of this movement, of this team of independent free reporters. And uh, she looked like she really wanted to do something with this station because no development, nothing. You, you cannot fight forever. And in that moment, I, I decided it's if she's going to, to close the company, I have to make a movie about it. We launched this company together mm, back then nine years ago. And the company survived so many awful political events in Russia. And if she's going to close it, I have to make a very, very sad, very pessimistic film about it. But and it didn't happen. It didn't happen. <laughs> and you know what I think is also interesting kind of about the film is on the one hand, it kind of provides a bit of a history of you know politics um, in the last decade or so in, in Russia, but it's also so much about Natasha herself, you know, starting with this kind of like fairy tale of hers, marrying her prince and how she kind of, you know, came into the sort of news business quite naive, more from a show business background, and then kind of herself got an education and had became, had this desire then more for kind of social justice purpose and to, to provide the truth to people. So did you think that that was interesting as part of the narrative? It's also her journey that she goes on uh, as, a, as a person. Um, there are two arcs in this film. The one arc is Natasha's arc, her personal development, her personal trajectory. Another arc is the uh, arc of the country of Russia, Russia, Russia's development from time of hopes to full isolation that we see now. And there are two trajectory that, trajectories that intervenes to each other. And um, Obviously, Russian development uh, drove Natasha to her development. So 
I try to mix them. I try to I try to make them. Uh, uh, I, I I try to see it together. Together, the, these two arcs, and we see enormous development of Natasha as a person from very a political person. She barely knew names. Maybe she knew this is Vladimir Putin. This is Dmitry Medvedev. That's it. She knew nothing about news. She knew nothing about politics. In 10 years, she had never ever voted on elections. And we see her arc where she ended up by today as a fighter. And I think what also kind of stands out about that is do we sometimes think have in our minds maybe a bit of a stereotype of the kinds of people who quite fearlessly lead these sorts of organizations in the face of danger, in the face of criticism, in the face of being kind of closed down. And maybe she's not who you picture. And there's something incredible about that because it shows that you can never judge a book by its cover. You can never judge, you know, she's kind of this beautiful effervescent, um, you know, uh, glamorous woman. And she's so strong and she's so tough and she's so determined and kind of um, until, you know, there are the, the real crunch points, seems endlessly optimistic. So she's very inspirational as a figure. Uh, I agree. I agree. And um, I think uh, the Kremlin and the Russian authorities, they underestimate her because she doesn't look like uh, someone serious. She didn't look like a person who might be whatever, danger for the state or something. And her, but, but at the same time, uh, she's not pretending. It is her nature, she, naturally. She's a dancer, she in love with tango and um, she's very light and very optimistic. And she looked like for Russian serious men, not like a threat at all. And I also love um, the fact that we get this kind of, um, we like manage to be like a fly on the wall a lot of the time with the newsroom, with the staff and how they kind of almost ignore their own personal lives. And this becomes a family. And that's also something that obviously has like made the TV station what it is. And, you know, was that something you also wanted to kind of show in your documentary? Um, that's not just a team, just not a TV station, just a TV station. It's a, they work so many years as a family. They feel themselves as a family. Many people left company, but they always join for any celebration. You know, it's like a big family. And uh, they sometimes we discuss that they're kind of cult or sect, but, but in, 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 a, in a positive way, in a positive way, because uh, they are united around very positive idea, around very important values. And the other thing that's incredibly striking is just what they were up against. So at some point, this kind of the levity of them putting on the programs and you know, things not always going according to plan and then at other moments we really see the risk you know when some of the reporters are basically in a war zone um the quote you know that made the title of the movie fuck this job you know they were really um putting themselves in in, in the line of fire so you know is it again, inspirational to see that some people will go that far for their job and they saw this as that important that they'd even put themselves in danger. And what was that like for you also making this documentary? Have you feared for your own safety or have you faced any repercussions from also telling the truth of their story? Oh, that's so hard question, especially now, because it was absolutely... Um awful night because last night Vladimir Putin announced that um, so Russian army is in uh, Ukraine territory now so and 
uh, you know, I don't know how, but I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say, you know, just, uh, they cannot feel safe, you know, they cannot, we, we, we don't feel safe. I, I, I don't know what to say, you know, just still Natasha is very optimistic and she doesn't change anything in her personal life. And I talked to her this morning because we discussed what happened last night. And uh, no, Dost is on life. They're working, you know, but you never know. I don't know what to say. But I guess in that sense, your documentary seems more timely than ever because of you know, these events are still unfolding as we speak. You know, there's just seen on my phone an announcement from Boris Johnson responding to what's going on. So if in, oh. anything, it kind of makes your work even more urgent. And in that sense, what do you hope people will take away from watching the film? Um, you know, uh, Ukraine topic is one of the main um, backbones of the film. And uh, obviously, in terms of the moment, uh, uh, I mean, audience will find out how it was, how it it started in 2014. Uh, I gave very clear picture of the beginning of this war and how we saw this war in 2014 from a uh, newsroom in Moscow. And uh, I think it will give more solid picture to the British audience, that's for sure. Uh, another uh, another motiv motivation, uh, my motivation was and is to show that uh, we are not freaks, I mean, not Russians, because I, I, I want to uh, broke the cliche. There are so many beautiful, smart people who are much closer to the British society, their Western societies than anyone else. And uh, I think for me, it's so important to see, to, to show these people to the Western uh, society, you know, just uh, for me, it's so crucial, especially now, especially today. And I believe the film has also been shown um, in Russia. And so and from the other side, what has been the response um, from people from your home country to the film? Uh, uh, we have scheduled release on March the 2nd. I have no predictions, no idea how it will be released in Russia since what happened last night. I don't know. We had just one screening of the film in Russia, it was a closing event of the largest documentary, independent documentary film festival in Russia, Art Dog Fest. And it was a closing event, and it was a big audience of a thousand, more than a thousand people. And uh, it was total success, total success. Uh, I got hundreds of letters from the audience and uh, it wasn't uh, immediate reaction it started two days later i got so many calls letters people tried to explain to me that it was so important to cry together to cry together you know and uh, yeah it was it was so emotional uh, two, two days I couldn't wake up because of this emotional wave. So how it's gonna be from March the second next week, I have no idea. I do worry. I don't know. And you know, I don't know if, if you know that that this film will be released on BBC Storyville as well. In in 
in on, on March 9th, so in two, in two, less than in two weeks. So it's so timely, yeah. And do you feel optimism for the future, you know, as we, as we sit here today? Um, I don't, I don't. Natasha does, I don't. And I wondered if this also kind of a message in the film or at least a resonance that of course this is focused on Russia, but the fact of the way it also provides a study in, um, you know, truth telling, honesty and the impact of the media um, and how people view politics, view their lives and the importance of truth. You know, if we think of the Trump era in the US and how it can run through everything. So there's a, also a wider message to the film that's not just about Russia. Of course, uh, you know, I started this film in 2019. Do you remember that time? Trump was uh, at the White House uh, and uh, fake news, it was the most kind of popular words and is, unfortunately. And yes, of course, I thought it's it's a it's a global story. It's a global story. It's about price. Independent journalists pay for their job. It's about uh, um, how essential how essential is to deliver true stories. Yeah, it's absolutely global issue. It's from my point of view. And you know, the interesting thing is. We, um, we were on uh, Doc NYC documentary competition, the largest the documentary film festival of the United States. And so many people reached me out after their screening saying, it's a story about us. It's a story about us. I thought, oh my God, you don't know what you're, what, what you're talking about. But many people told me it's about us. And I think I'm out of time, but um, maybe you can also tell us you know, if you already have your next project in mind, another documentary. And I also wondered if, you know, do you see that actually now is a really great time for female filmmakers and particularly in documentary making? I feel like I'm doing lots of interviews and it feels like maybe something that used to be a bit of a male dominated genre is really opening up and what you think female storytellers can bring to our screens. Uh, no, first of all, we are so strong and we can deliver very strong story and we are delivering st so strong stories and we will deliver beautiful amazing strong stories i think it's 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 a main thing and uh, i have already started my new project and uh, and i'm not i'm not going to i don't want to tell you about it but you know we have to keep working. Indeed. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much for sharing all that with us and for putting this incredible documentary out into the world. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Vera. Really lovely to chat to you. See you. Bye -bye. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.